Chapters 36 through 41 of the Book of Genesis from the World English Bible. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Genesis from the World English Bible. Chapters 36 through 41. Chapter 36. Now this is the history of the generations of Esau, that is, Edom. Esau took his wives from the daughters of Canaan, Adah, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite, and Oholibamah, the daughter of Anna, the daughter of Zibion, the Hivite, and Basemath, Ishmael's daughter, sister of Nebaioth. Adah bore to Esau Eliphaz, Basemath bore Ruel, Oholibamah bore Jeush, Jalem, and Korah. These are the sons of Esau, who were born to him in the land of Canaan. Esau took his wives, his sons, his daughters, and all the members of his household, with his livestock, all his animals, and all his possessions, which he had gathered in the land of Canaan, and went into a land away from his brother Jacob. For their substance was too great for them to dwell together, and the land of their travels couldn't bear them because of their livestock. Esau lived in the hill country of Seir. Esau is Edom. This is the history of the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites, in the hill country of Seir. These are the names of Esau's sons, Eliphaz, the son of Adah, the wife of Esau, and Ruel, the son of Basemath, the wife of Esau. The sons of Eliphaz were Teman, Omar, Zepho, and Gatim, and Kenaz. Timnah was concubine to Eliphaz, Esau's son, and she bore Eliphaz Amalek. These are the sons of Adah, Esau's wife. These are the sons of Ruel, Nahath, Zerah, Shammah, and Mizah. These were the sons of Basemath, Esau's wife. These were the sons of Oholibamah, the daughter of Ana, the daughter of Zibion, Esau's wife. She bore to Esau Jush, Jalem, and Korah. These are the chiefs of the sons of Esau, the sons of Eliphaz, the firstborn of Esau, Chief Teman, Chief Omar, Chief Zepho, Chief Kenaz, Chief Korah, Chief Gatum, Chief Amalek, these are the chiefs who came of Eliphaz in the land of Edom. These are the sons of Ada. These are the sons of Ruel, Esau's son, Chief Nahath, Chief Zerah, Chief Shammah, Chief Mizah. These are the chiefs who came of Ruel in the land of Edom. These are the sons of Basemath, Esau's wife. These are the sons of Oholibamah, Esau's wife, Chief Jush, Chief Jalem, Chief Korah. These are the chiefs who came of Oholibamah, the daughter of Anah, Esau's wife. These are the sons of Esau, that is, Edom, and these are their chiefs. These are the sons of Seir, the Horite, the inhabitants of the land, Lotan, Shobal, Zibion, Anah, Dishan, Azer, and Dishan. These are the chiefs who came of the Horites, the children of Seir, in the land of Edom. The children of Lotan were Hori and Heman. Lotan's sister was Timnah. These are the children of Shobal, Alvan, Manahath, Ebal, Sepho, and Onam. These are the children of Zibion, Aya and Ana. This is Ana who found the hot springs in the wilderness as he fed the donkeys of Zibion his father. These are the children of Ana, Dishan, and Oholibamah, the daughter of Ana. These are the children of Dishan, Hemdan, Eshban, Ithran, and Charan. These are the children of Azer, Bilhan, Zavan, and Achan. These are the children of Dishan, Uz, and Aram. These are the chiefs who came of the Horites, Chief Lotan, Chief Shobal, Chief Zibion, Chief Ana, Chief Dishan, Chief Ezer, and Chief Dishan. These are the chiefs who came of the Horites, according to their chiefs in the land of Seir. These are the kings who reigned in the land of Edom before any king reigned over the children of Israel. Bela, the son of Beor, reigned in Edom. The name of his city was Dinhabah. Bela died, and Jobab, the son of Zerah of Bozrah, reigned in his place. Jobab died, and Husham, of the land of the Temanites, reigned in his place. Husham died, and Hadad, the son of Badad, who struck Midian in the field of Moab, reigned in his place. The name of his city was Avah. Hadad died, and Samla of Masrika reigned in his place. Samla died, and Shal of Rehoboth by the river reigned in his place. Shaul died, 
and Baal Hanan, the son of Achbor, reigned in his place. Baal Hanan, the son of Achbor, died, and Hadar reigned in his place. The name of his city was Pau. His wife's name was Mehedabal, the daughter of Matrid, the daughter of Mezahab. These are the names of the chiefs who came from Esau according to their families after their places, and by their names. Chief Timnah, Chief Avla, Chief Jetheth, Chief Oholibamah, Chief Elah, Chief Pinan, Chief Kenaz, Chief Teman, Chief Mibzar, Chief Magdiel, and Chief Iram. These are the chiefs of Edom according to their habitations in the land of their possession. This is Esau, the father of the Edomites. Chapter 37 Jacob lived in the land of his father's travels, in the land of Canaan. This is the history of the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being seventeen years old, was feeding the flock with his brothers. He was a boy with the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, his father's wives. Joseph brought an evil report of them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. The brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, and they hated him, and couldn't speak peaceably to him. Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him all the more. He said to them, Please hear this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in a field, and behold, my sheaf arose and also stood upright, and behold, your sheaves came around and bowed down to my sheaf. His brothers said to him, Will you indeed reign over us, or will you indeed have dominion over us? They hated him all the more for his dreams and for his words. He dreamed yet another dream, and told it to his brothers, and said, Behold, I have dreamed yet another dream, and behold, the sun and the moon and eleven stars bowed down to me. He told it to his father and his brothers. His father rebuked him, and said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Will I and your mother and your brothers indeed come to bow ourselves down to you to the earth? His brothers envied him, but his father kept this saying in mind. His brothers went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. Israel said to Joseph, Aren't your brothers feeding the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send you to them. He said to him, Here I am. He said to him, Now go, see whether it is well with your brothers, and well with the flock, and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the valley of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. A certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. The man asked him, What are you looking for? He said, I am looking for my brothers. Tell me, please, where they are feeding the flock. The man said, They have left here, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. Joseph went after his brothers and found them in Dothan. They saw him afar off, and before he came near to them, they conspired against him to kill him. They said one to another, Behold, this dreamer comes. Come now, therefore, and let's kill him, and cast him into one of the pits, and we'll say, An evil animal has devoured him. We will see what will become of his dreams. Reuben heard it, and delivered him out of their hand, and said, Let's not take his life. Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, throw him into this pit that is in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him, that he might deliver him out of their hand, to restore him to his father. It happened, when Joseph came to his brothers, that they stripped Joseph of his coat, the coat of many colors that was on him, and they took him and threw him into the pit. The pit was empty, there was no water in it. They sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked, and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites was coming from Gilead, with their camels bearing spices and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, and let's sell him to the Ishmaelites, and not let our hand be on him, for he is our brother, our flesh. His brothers listened to him. Midianites, who were merchants, passed by, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit, and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver. They brought Joseph into Egypt. Reuben returned to the pit, and saw that Joseph wasn't in the pit, and he tore his clothes. He returned to his brothers and said, The child is no more, and I, where will I go? They took Joseph's coat, and killed a male goat, and dipped the coat in the blood. They took the coat of many colors, and they brought it to their father, and said, 
We have found this. Examine it now, whether it is your son's coat or not. He recognized it and said, It is my son's coat. An evil animal has devoured him. Joseph is without doubt torn in pieces. Jacob tore his clothes and put sackcloth on his waist and mourned for his son many days. All his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. He said, For I will go down to Sheol, to my son, mourning. His father wept for him. The Midianites sold him into Egypt to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh's, the captain of the guard. Chapter 38 It happened at that time that Judah went down from his brothers and visited a certain Adulamite, whose name was Hira. Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua. He took her and went into her. She conceived and bore a son, and he named him Ur. She conceived again and bore a son, and she named him Onan. She yet again bore a son and named him Shelah, and he was at Chezib when she bore him. Judah took a wife for Ur, his firstborn, and her name was Tamar. Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of Yahweh. Yahweh killed him. Judah said to Onan, Go in to your brother's wife and perform the duty of a husband's brother to her, and raise up seed to your brother. Onan knew that the seed wouldn't be his. And it happened, when he went in to his brother's wife, that he spilled it on the ground, lest he should give seed to his brother. The thing which he did was evil in the sight of Yahweh, and he killed him also. Then Judah said to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, Remain a widow in your father's house until Shelah, my son, is grown up. For he said, Lest he also die like his brothers. Tamar went and lived in her father's house. After many days, Shua's daughter, the wife of Judah, died. Judah was comforted and went up to his sheep shearers to Timnah, he and his friend Hira, the Adulamite. It was told Tamar, saying, Behold, your father-in-law is going up to Timnah to shear his sheep. She took off of her the garments of her widowhood, and covered herself with her veil, and wrapped herself, and sat in the gate of Anaim, which is by the way to Timnah. For she saw that Shelah was grown up, and she wasn't given to him as a wife. When Judah saw her, he thought that she was a prostitute, for she had covered her face. He turned to her by the way and said, Please come, let me come in to you for he didn't know that she was his daughter-in-law. She said, What will you give me, that you may come in to me? He said, I will send you a kid of the goats from the flock. She said, Will you give me a pledge until you send it? He said, What pledge will I give you? She said, Your signet and your cord, and your staff that is in your hand. He gave them to her, and came in to her, and she conceived by him. She arose and went away, and put off her veil from her, and put on the garments of her widowhood. Judah sent the kid of the goats by the hand of his friend, the Adulamite, to receive the pledge from the woman's hand, but he didn't find her. Then he asked the men of her place, saying, Where is the prostitute that was in a name by the road? They said, There has been no prostitute here. He returned to Judah and said, I haven't found her, and also the men of the place said, There has been no prostitute here. Judah said, Let her keep it, lest we be shamed. Behold, I sent this kid, and you haven't found her. It happened about three months later that it was told Judah, saying, Tamar, your daughter-in-law, has played the prostitute, and moreover, behold, she is with child by prostitution. Judah said, Bring her forth, and let her be burnt. When she was brought forth, she sent to her father-in-law, saying, By the man whose these are, I am with child. She also said, Please discern whose these are, the signet, and the cords, and the staff. Judah acknowledged them, and said, She is more righteous than I, because I didn't give her to Shelah, my son. He knew her again no more. It happened in the time of her travail, that, behold, twins were in her womb. When she travailed, one put out a hand, and the midwife took and tied a scarlet thread on his hand, saying, This came out first. It happened, as he drew back his hand, that, behold, his brother came out, and she said, Why have you made a breach for yourself? Therefore his name was called Perez. Afterward his brother came out, that had the scarlet thread on his hand, and his name was called Zerah. Chapter 39 Joseph was brought down to Egypt. Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh's, the captain of the guard, an Egyptian, 
bought him from the hand of the Ishmaelites that had brought him down there. Yahweh was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. He was in the house of his master the Egyptian. His master saw that Yahweh was with him, and that Yahweh made all that he did prosper in his hand. Joseph found favor in his sight. He ministered to him, and he made him overseer of his house, and all that he had he put into his hand. It happened from the time that he made him overseer of his house, and over all that he had, that Yahweh blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of Yahweh was on all that he had, in the house and in the field. He left all that he had in Joseph's hand. He didn't concern himself with anything except for the food which he ate. Joseph was well built and handsome. It happened after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes on Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Behold, my master doesn't know what is with me in the house, and he has put all that he has into my hand. He isn't greater in this house than I, neither has he kept back anything from me but you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? As she spoke to Joseph day by day, he didn't listen to her, to lie by her, or to be with her. About this time he went into the house to do his work, and there were none of the men of the house inside. She caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. He left his garment in her hand and ran outside. When she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and had run outside, she called to the men of the house and spoke to them, saying, Behold, he has brought in a Hebrew to us to mock us. He came in to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. It happened, when he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment by me and ran outside. She laid up his garment by her until his master came home. She spoke to him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant whom you have brought to us came in to me to mock me, and it happened, as I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment by me and ran outside. It happened, when his master heard the words of his wife, which she spoke to him, saying, This is what your servant did to me, that his wrath was kindled. Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, the place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in custody. But Yahweh was with Joseph, and showed kindness to him, and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. The keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners who were in the prison. Whatever they did there, he was responsible for it. The keeper of the prison didn't look after anything that was under his hand, because Yahweh was with him, and that which he did, Yahweh made it prosper. Chapter 40. It happened after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker offended their lord, the king of Egypt. Pharaoh was angry with his two officers, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker. He put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. The captain of the guard assigned them to Joseph, and he took care of them. They stayed in prison many days. They both dreamed a dream, each man his dream, in one night, each man according to the interpretation of his dream, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were bound in the prison. Joseph came to them in the morning, and saw them, and saw that they were sad. He asked Pharaoh's officers who were with him in custody in his master's house, saying, Why do you look so sad today? They said to him, We dreamed a dream, and there is no one who can interpret it. Joseph said to them, don't interpretations belong to God? Please tell it to me. The chief cupbearer told his dream to Joseph, and said to him, In my dream, behold, a vine was in front of me, and in the vine were three branches. It was as though it budded, its blossom shot forth, and its clusters brought forth ripe grapes. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes, and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup, and I gave the cup to Pharaoh's hand. Joseph said to him, This is its interpretation. The three branches are three days. Within three more days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your office. You will give Pharaoh's cup into his hand, the way you did when you were his cup-bearer. But remember me when it will be well with you, and show kindness, please, to me, and make mention of me to Pharaoh, and bring me out of this house. For indeed, I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews, and here also have I done nothing that they should put me into the dungeon." When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said to Joseph, I also was in my dream, and behold, three baskets of white bread were on my head, 
In the uppermost basket there was all kinds of baked food for Pharaoh, and the birds ate them out of the basket on my head. Joseph answered, This is the interpretation. The three baskets are three days. Within three more days, Pharaoh will lift up your head from off you, and will hang you on a tree, and the birds will eat your flesh from off you. It happened the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast for all his servants, and he lifted up the head of the chief cupbearer and the head of the chief baker among his servants. He restored the chief cupbearer to his position again, and he gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted to them. Yet the chief cupbearer didn't remember Joseph, but forgot him. Chapter 41 It happened at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river. Behold, there came up out of the river seven cattle, sleek and fat, and they fed in the marsh grass. Behold, seven other cattle came up after them out of the river, ugly and thin, and stood by the other cattle on the brink of the river. The ugly and thin cattle ate up the seven sleek and fat cattle. So Pharaoh awoke. He slept and dreamed a second time, and behold, seven heads of grain came up on one stalk, healthy and good. Behold, seven heads of grain, thin and blasted with the east wind, sprung up after them. The thin heads of grain swallowed up the seven healthy and full ears. Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. It happened in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for all of Egypt's magicians and wise men. Pharaoh told them his dreams, but there was no one who could interpret them to Pharaoh. Then the chief cupbearer spoke to Pharaoh, saying, I remember my faults today. Pharaoh was angry with his servants, and put me in custody in the house of the captain of the guard, me and the chief baker. We dreamed a dream in one night, I and he. We dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. There was with us there a young man, a Hebrew, servant to the captain of the guard, and we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man according to his dream he interpreted. It happened as he interpreted to us, so it was. He restored me to my office, and he hanged him. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. He shaved himself, changed his clothing, and came into Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is no one who can interpret it. I have heard it said of you, that when you hear a dream you can interpret it. Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It isn't in me. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Pharaoh spoke to Joseph, In my dream, behold, I stood on the brink of the river, and behold, there came up out of the river seven cattle, fat and sleek. They fed in the marsh grass, and behold, seven other cattle came up after them, poor and very ugly and thin, such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt for ugliness. The thin and ugly cattle ate up the first seven fat cattle, and when they had eaten them up, it couldn't be known that they had eaten them, but they were still ugly, as at the beginning. So I awoke. I saw in my dream, and behold, seven heads of grain came up on one stalk, full and good. And behold, seven heads of grain, withered, thin, and blasted with the east wind, sprung up after them. The thin heads of grain swallowed up the seven good heads of grain. I told it to the magicians, but there was no one who could explain it to me. Joseph said to Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. What God is about to do he has declared to Pharaoh. The seven good cattle are seven years, and the seven good heads of grain are seven years. The dream is one. The seven thin and ugly cattle that came up after them are seven years, and also the seven empty heads of grain blasted with the east wind. They will be seven years of famine. That is the thing which I spoke to Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he has shown to Pharaoh. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. There will arise after them seven years of famine, and all the plenty will be forgotten in the land of Egypt. The famine will consume the land, and the plenty will not be known in the land by reason of that famine which follows, for it will be very grievous. The dream was doubled to Pharaoh, because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now therefore, let Pharaoh look for a discreet and wise man, and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this, and let him appoint overseers over the land, and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt's produce in the seven plenteous years. Let them gather all the food of these good years that come, 
and lay up grain under the hand of Pharaoh for food in the cities, and let them keep it. The food will be for a store to the land against the seven years of famine, which will be in the land of Egypt, that the land not perish through the famine. The thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of all his servants. Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom is the Spirit of God? Pharaoh said to Joseph, Because God has shown you all of this, there is none so discreet and wise as you. You shall be over my house, and according to your word will all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. Pharaoh said to Joseph, Behold, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh took off his signet ring from his hand, and put it on Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in robes of fine linen, and put a gold chain about his neck, and he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. They cried before him, Bow the knee. He set him over all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without you shall no man lift up his hand or his foot in all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh called Joseph's name zaphnath paneah and he gave him Asenath, the daughter of Potipharah, the priest of On, as a wife. Joseph went out over the land of Egypt. Joseph was thirty years old when he stood before Pharaoh king of Egypt. Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh, and went throughout all the land of Egypt. In the seven plenteous years the earth brought forth abundantly. He gathered up all the food of the seven years which were in the land of Egypt, and laid up the food in the cities. The food of the field, which was around every city, he laid up in the same. Joseph laid up grain as the sand of the sea, very much, until he stopped counting, for it was without number. To Joseph were born two sons before the year of famine came, whom Asenath, the daughter of Potiphera, priest of On, bore to him. Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for, he said, God has made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. The name of the second he called Ephraim, for God has made me fruitful in the land of my affliction. The seven years of plenty that were in the land of Egypt came to an end. The seven years of famine began to come, just as Joseph had said. There was famine in all lands, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. When all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread, and Pharaoh said to all the Egyptians, Go to Joseph, what he says to you, do. The famine was over all the surface of the earth. Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold to the Egyptians. The famine was severe in the land of Egypt. All countries came into Egypt to Joseph to buy grain, because the famine was severe in all the earth. End of chapters 36 through 41